Okay, so you just got your Retroid Pocket 2 in, you're really excited to play a bunch of games on it, but you've got no idea where to start. This guide will help you with initial setup out of the box, beginner's tips and tricks, how to set up RetroArch, Drastic, Mame for Droid, Moopin64 plus FZ, and 64oid and PPSSPP. Do note that I will not be covering Retroid OS at all in this video. I've never used it, you can't use in-game saves, I'm very happy with the capabilities of Android OS, and the fact that it includes ROMs in a marketplace to download them is, well, it's kind of shady, and I'll have nothing to do with it. I'll be covering the Pegasus launcher in another video, and that's the front end I'm most familiar with. You'll have to look elsewhere for guides on Dig or any others. Check the timestamps for what you're looking for, but without further ado, out of the box setup. Okay, slap that screen protector on there before you schmutz up your screen with your Cheeto fingers, and let's get cracking. Firstly, eject your micro SD card and back up the files on there to your PC. Always good to have that stuff. If you've already lost those files, check the links in the description for a bunch of important things, such as those files, minus the encrypted ROMs. Speaking of which, feel free to delete those encrypted ROMs. That's what's taking up most of your space, and you can always supply your own. As far as I'm aware, there's no space limitation. I personally use a 512GB micro SD, and it works great. And I'll include a great Reddit post in the description for picking out a good micro SD for your RP2. Take your shiny new micro SD and insert it into the device. On your RP2, navigate to Settings, Storage and USB, SD card, then activate touch mode by holding the home button down for a few seconds and go to the three dots in the corner of the screen and press A, which emulates touching a non-touch screen screen. To go back to using buttons, simply hold the home button again. Format. I format my cards as internal. This makes the SD card specific to this device until you reformat it and supposedly can lower performance, but I've seen no issues with it. If you decide to install apps directly from the SD card, having the extra space is pretty great. When I talk about file locations in this video, I'll be referring to them as though you've internally formatted your SD. Ultimately, it's up to you how you format your card. Anyway, once your micro SD card has been formatted, plug your RP2 into your PC. Using touch mode, swipe down the status bar, like you would on a phone, and set your USB mode to file transfer. Once your computer has installed the drivers, you should see your SD card in your PC. Now you can copy over your SD card backup. Also make a folder here called ROMs and add any ROMs that you want to add. I highly recommend you include subfolders by system and keep your files well organized. Okay, device settings time. Go to settings, Wi-Fi, and set up your Wi-Fi connection. Go ahead and check some of your other settings here too, like lengthening the time it takes for your device to go into auto sleep and display, turning off notification sounds and sound and notification, allowing app installation from outside sources and security, and setting up your date and time if necessary. Also, let's go into the Play Store and log into your account or make a family burner account if you're worried about device security. In general, if you only use your Wi-Fi at home, you should be fine using your main account. Okay, let's set up RetroArch. First, you'll see that you have two RetroArches. These are both optimized to work well with your RP2. Don't uninstall them or you'll have to reinstall them via APK, as the current versions on the Play Store don't work very well. The one that has the little Game Boy Advance icon is specifically for GBA games, and the other one is for almost everything else. RetroArch uses cores, and you can think of these cores as emulators for use specifically within RetroArch. If you'd like a full rundown of all the cores that work well with RP2, check the wiki, link is in the description. Both of these RetroArch apps are set up basically the same way, so go ahead and do both at once. From this menu, which looks slightly different on the GBA one, go right to the Settings tab. On your RP2, B will be Select and A will be Cancel by default, and if you'd like those swapped, you can do so by scrolling down to Input, Menu Controls, Swap Menu OK, and Cancel Buttons. While we're here, go back one and go down to Hotkey Binds. Make sure you set your menu toggle gamepad combo to something you'll remember. This is also where you'll set up your other hotkeys, but for now this is the important one. Next, go back to the main settings tab and scroll to configuration. Check save configuration on exit so you don't have to manually save it each time you change a setting. Okay, go back and scroll down to directory. Don't mess with these unless you know what you're doing, with the exception of file browser. This is where you want to launch your ROMs from, so have it point to your ROMs folder, which should be an SD card slash ROMs. Next, unless you'd like to keep your frame counter on, scroll to on-screen display, on-screen notifications, display frame rate. Feel free to look at the other settings, but if you're not sure what you're doing here, don't touch anything. Before we launch any games, go ahead and quit RetroArch through the RetroArch's main menu so all your settings save. Next, on your PC, go to your device and go to SD card, Android, data, com.retroarch, files, and copy the RetroArch config to somewhere on your computer so you can edit it. Open the file for editing, and use Ctrl F to search for menu underscore show underscore information, and change false to true. I'll talk about this later. 
Next, do a Control F search for negative 3 and change input player 1 RY plus axis to plus 3. For some reason, up and down both register the same on the right stick, so this was likely just a typo error. Save this file and overwrite your old one in your device. While we're on our PC, go ahead and download the PCSX rearmed core I have in the description and place it somewhere easy to find on your device. Now let me give you a really quick retro arch rundown. Firstly, let's go to load core from the main menu. These are all your emulators and they tell you basically what games they run. All the way at the bottom of the pre-installed cores, you'll see you can download new cores or manually install cores. Don't overwrite or update your cores or you could really mess up your cores, and you'll need to re-download RetroArch from APKs or the individual core files and start fresh. However, let's go to install or restore a core and navigate to that PCSX rearmed core I had you download and install it. The version of PCSX rearmed that comes preloaded has a bunch of input issues, and this version of the core fixes that. Okay, to launch a game, select load content. If you set up your file browser directory, it should be pretty easy to select a ROM. RetroArch may ask you which core you'd like to use to launch the content. To exit the game, use that menu toggle combo we set earlier, and scroll to close content. This is also the menu you can save and load states from, as well as set up game specific settings. More on that soon. Let's talk about BIOS files real quick. Some consoles, like Neo Geo, TurboGrafx CD, Sega CD, and many others, require BIOS files to run properly. For all of these except Neo Geo, these files need to go in SD card, RetroArch, system. Your Neo Geo BIOS simply goes in the same folder as your ROMs. This is all well and good, but what if you don't know what BIOS files you need to play games? Well, this is why we allowed RetroArch to show information for our cores. Go to load core from the main menu and load up a core like NEC PC Engine slash CD, Beetle PCE Fast. Now go to information, core information. Scroll down and under firmware as you can see what BIOS files you need and what they should be named. It'll also tell you whether or not you have those files. Very useful. This menu is also the only way you can delete a core without rooting your device, but just keep that in the back of your mind if you need it. One last thing when it comes to RetroArch for now, and that's setting up core or game specific controls. Use your menu toggle gamepad combo to go to the quick menu and scroll down to controls. Under port 1 you can change your control scheme with relative ease. After you've done so, you can use Save Core Remap File if you want those controls to be that way for every game in the core, or Save Game Remap File if you'd like it to be specific to that game. I personally use this to change Neo Geo and Neo Geo CD controls to more properly mimic a Neo Geo controller. Finally, the last word about RetroArch, make sure you go to Exit Content from the Quick Menu and Exit RetroArch when you're done, or your games may not save your progress. Okay, that's enough about RetroArch, let's change gears to Drastic. Drastic is the only way to play DS on this device, and it's an excellent app. It's going to run you $4.99 on the Play Store, though. Super easy to set up. Just launch Drastic and go to Change Options. The only thing you really need to worry about here is external controller settings. Go to Select Key Mapping and go to No Mapping. From here, use Map Control to map your controls, and Map Special to set special commands like Fast Forward, Swapping Screens, Pressing Down on the Touchscreen, and many others. Scroll down to right stick mode if you'd like to use the right stick as a touchscreen indicator. From here, it's pretty easy to get in the game. Use touch mode to open the quick menu. This button toggles the controller overlay, this one changes your screen layout, and this one swaps screens. If you go into the full menu, you can go to options, and in the top right, you can set per game settings. You can also adjust your screen sizes and layouts, as well as quit out of drastic. As a general note, you can use touch mode to interact with the bottom screen if you didn't set it up to work with the right stick and a pointer down button. MAME for droid controls can be a bit confusing, so just follow my lead here. Using touch mode, let's go to Options, Settings, Input. Set mode to Controller Auto Detection and Define Keys Player 1. Set up your controls, and as always, keep in mind your menu and exit buttons. Leave Input Settings, go to General, and select Change ROM Paths. Next time you open MAME for droid, you'll be able to select the path to your ROMs. Next, scroll down to Touch Controller Visible for Landscape Mode, and make sure that's turned off so you don't see the touch overlay. In Moopin 64 Plus FZ, in the top right, select Refresh ROMs. Point to your N64 folder, hit OK, and let it go to work. Next, in the top left, select those three lines and go to Profiles, Controller, RP2, Edit. If you want to change any controls here, select the button with Touch Mode, go back to Gamepad Mode, and select your button. You may need to unmap it first, unless you'd like multiple buttons functioning the same way. You can also see what the default mappings are here. Under Settings Display, you can also turn off the frame rate if you'd like. Now, you may have heard the N64 runs kinda rough on here, so select the game you want to play and select Settings. Scroll down to Emulation Profile, and set it to whatever the spreadsheet in the description says runs the best. Now you can play. 
N64oid seems to have the best performance with N64 across the board, but it has woefully few settings and the right stick is useless, as it can't be mapped at all, meaning you'll have to get creative with control mapping. I'll include a link in the description to some tried and true key mappings for you to try out. After opening N64oid, select the three dots in the upper right and go to Input Settings, Key Mappings, Key Mappings under Controller 1. Once you've set up your controls, make sure you select Save Profile and name it. You can then use Load Profile to select whatever profile you made. To get to the menu in game, use touchpad mode and press B. PPSSPP is already set up to work pretty well, but I found the best performance by going to Settings, Graphics, and making sure frame skipping is set to 1, with auto frame skip on, and actually setting the rendering resolution under performance to 2 times PSP. I'm not sure if that's my imagination, but it, it seems to run better for me. While in game, you can use R2 by default to open the menu, and use Create Game Config if you want to edit controls by game like making FPS's twin stick by making the right stick mimic the face buttons, for instance. Now that we've set all those things up, chances are they're all running in the background. If you hold select for a few seconds, you'll pull up all your active apps, slowly draining your battery. You can use the D-pad and X button to close them, or in touch mode, you can close them with the X or swipe them away. Okay, that's all the basic information I wanted to cover. With this, you should be set to play most of the things you want to play. Real quick, I want to have a lightning FAQ for people who skim the video or just skip to this segment. None of my buttons work. Make sure you're not in touch mode by holding the home button for a few seconds. None of my controls work in PCSX Rearmed on RetroArch. Download and manually install the PCSX Rearmed that I have in the description. I updated and or deleted RetroArch, and now nothing seems to work. The original RetroArches included were optimized for your device. Redownload the original APKs from the description. What BIOS do I need for this RetroArch core? Go to this part of the video, then this part. Can I play Sega Saturn, Xbox, PS2, 3DS, or GameCube on this? No. I hate RetroArch. Aren't there other ways to play my ROMs? Sure. Check the wiki in the description for other emulators that we know work. My right stick isn't working in-game. Are you in N64oid? It doesn't support the right stick. Are you in RetroArch? Go to this part of the video. I can't see the files on my RP2 when plugged into my PC. Go to this part of the video. You didn't solve my problems at all. You suck. Try going to the Retroid Pocket Discord, asking there, and also being a little more polite. Hopefully you learned something from this video, or it helped you out in some way. I'll be sharing a readable version of this video along with all the stuff in the description, so if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment, and I'll help to the best of my ability. Cheers, and happy gaming. I'd like to take a moment to thank my one and only Patreon supporter, Harvest Time. Thank you so much for your support. It really means a lot to me and keeps me motivated to keep putting out quality content. If you're interested in becoming a patron, you can find the link in the description of this video. There you can listen to me sing your praises and even score some exclusive Cyberfile merchandise. Hey, thanks for watching! Don't forget to subscribe for more Cyberfile content, and if you like this video, show me with that little thumbs up button. If you liked this video, you might like one of my other videos. You can click right on the boxes to jump to them. Cyberfile, offline.